Let's talk about the audio path when the 244 is in playback mode. Largely speaking, we can ignore the, all the kind of resistors and capacitors and we can sort of abstract everything that's happening to the signal to kind of flow chart that's going through some major components and traveling through some different boards. When I say major components, I mean chord playback head, the various operational amplifiers and any variable resistors that are directly in the signal path. Master fader would be an example, the trim pots that you use to calibrate the record and playback levels. I would kind of include them in an abstract diagram, but I wouldn't include all the capacitors and resistors that are associated with the operational amplifiers. On this model, the signal goes through a bunch of different boards. It starts at the record and playback head. And then it goes to the record amplifier. And the reason it goes to the record amplifier first, even though we're in playback, is because the record and playback head has two functions, it's going to go through a relay. A relay is just an electronically controlled switch based on how you've got the controls, whether you're sending a signal to this head or receiving a signal from it. Obviously, in this case, we're receiving a signal from it. So um, we're up here and we're in the cord amplifier and that will go through K401 which is a relay. Maybe I'll get some colour coding on the go here. I'll put the names of the boards that were on in green. So from there it goes to the playback amplifier which makes more sense and in that playback amplifier essentially it's going through an operational amplifier and um, that's part U301. The part number, this is just the labelling that's used between the schematic and the printed circuit board. You're looking for a little black integrated chip that says U301 beside it, but I could just write op-amp. And then the output of that goes through a variable resistor. By the way, there's basically four outputs from this, so we're just looking at one channel, okay? Uh, excuse my handwriting, I'm, I'm dyslexic and I'm hoping I'm not going to totally fuck up the spelling at some point. And this is taking place in the playback amplifier. From there... It's going to the DBX board. I'm not going to put all the various components in it. There's a proprietary chip that's got the compander in it, a couple of operational amplifiers and trim pots associated. I'll just put DBX decode. And then that's coming from there to tape Q amp. There's going to be an op amp in there. I would actually need to check whether, for the purposes of monitoring through headphones or from the line out, whether that's even relevant. I'm not even sure that what we're hearing in the headphones or from the line out passes through that. And then it'll go from take Q amp to, it's listed as input amplifier in the schematic, but really it's your mixer strip. What's happening in there, in playback mode, it's going to bypass the gain control, obviously. So it's going to hit the fader. I won't give a part number for that. And then it's going to hit the various EQ sections. Obviously there's a few components there, but I'm going to conceptualize it as one block. And then it's going to hit the pan pot. All the way through this, we are dealing with a monaural signal. This is basically happening four times, going to four different mixer strips. And and there's no concept or left or right in there. What's happening with the pan control is basically it's taking the signal and it's splitting it into two. You've got two variable resistors that turn in opposite directions. So when this one's at full resistance, that one's at minimum resistance and vice versa. So if we label this as the mono and from this point forward, it's stereo. These are coming from the four pan pots on the mixer channels. We're now in the output amplifier. It's also got most of the power circuitry on it. I suppose just for the design reasons it made sense for them to have both of those on the same board. But they're all going to converge on a point. There's no special component that takes these four signals and blends it. It's just here you've got a relatively simple and quiet signal and then it, this side of this junction here then we've got a much more complex and louder signal which is an addition and a blend of these four signals. And so this becomes your left bus. And then Really what's happening is we've got an op amp going to master fader. I've given up putting down the, <laughs> the part numbers at this point. It doesn't actually seem relevant to what I'm describing here. And then another op amp. The same thing will be happening with the right bus. All the right sides of the four pans will be coming and joining on a point there and it will be going through, you know, an op amp and a master fader and an op amp. As you can see, I don't really have great presentation skills here. I don't do a lot of whiteboard teaching. And then there's a T-junction here and we'll go to, let's get rid of this, that's confusing. 
line out and then this one goes to believe that the headphone amplifiers are located on record amplifier if i'm wrong about that then it's definitely the playback amplifier